Hey, I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex. This is my monthly video on the best board games coming to retail. Uh, this is the month of March. You probably already knew that. Hopefully you already knew that because we are deep into the month of March right now. Every month I run through about 25 games that are hitting retail near you. And retail means friendly local game stores, but it also could mean through publishers' websites. It could mean through big box stores like Target or Barnes & Noble. Basically just any way that you can go get the games fairly immediately and easily instead of waiting you know, for a long time for a crowdfunding uh, campaign to fulfill. Uh, what's a long time? Longer than you think. That's what a long time is. It is. It's always longer than you think. So yeah, we got a bunch of great games from a lot of different publishers this month. So I, uh, I hope you find something that you're interested in. As always, I try to uh, pick a diversity of games. You're going to find some heavy games, some light games, some party games, some family games, and everything in between. So let's get into it. All of these games are not in any particular order. I just do it in order uh, alphabetically of the publisher of the game. So the first thing we have here in March is Colorfield from 25th Century Games. This is a lighter weight game for two to four players, plays in 20 to 45 minutes. And it is an abstract uh, tile laying game and you are just basically trying to create um, patches of bigger color types. You will be drafting these tiles from a central board and they have all these different sort of swaths of color on them and you are arranging them on your board and replacing tiles on your board to create points of connections. Oh, this is like a turquoise and then it's connecting to the turquoise on this other tile and I'm trying to make bigger patches of similar colors and I'm going to score points uh, for having different, uh, you know, diff bigger patches of colors. And so if you've ever wanted to be a painter, this feels like, you know, you are sitting there mixing colors together and you're about to paint a beautiful landscape, which I will never do because I'm an awful painter. I feel like people are like, oh, that's cute that you drew a stick figure person. And I'm like, nah, I wasn't trying to. That's the best I have in me. I, that's Stick figure is the best I can do right now. Uh, and so if you like abstract paintings, if you like uh, abstract puzzly tile laying games, then Color Field might be for you. Asmodee and Repos Productions are releasing Little Tavern. This is another lightweight game for three to five players. Um, it plays in about 25 minutes, they say. Uh, in Little Tavern, you are seating people at your tavern and trying to do the best job. It is a competitive game. But you're not just seating like regular people, you're seating all these different types of people and those different types of people are going to score you points in different ways. Like if you have a romantic at your table, they're only scoring points if there's another romantic at your table. There's going to be goblins, there's going to be nobles, and they all have sort of an asymmetric way to score points. Uh, one of the interesting things about the game, though, is there's a jumble of cards in the middle of the table, and on your turn, you will be either drafting a character card or an event card. When you take a character card, you can put them into your own tavern, or you can put them into someone else's tavern. That makes the game feel a little bit different than other games of this ilk. You know, oh, this is going to hurt you. I'm going to put it over there. This is going to help me. I'm going to gum up your tavern by taking up one of your seats. Because when everybody has every one of their seats full, the round ends and you score for the round. Uh, it's a lot of fun fantasy artwork. Definitely like a lightweight card game. You know, they say it plays ages eight and up. So if you're looking for a family card game, Little Tavern might be for you. If you are a fan of card games, this next game I'm going to talk about, Odin, is from Asmodee and Hel Helvetique. Um, and this feels like a classic card game, right? There is a bunch of these that are coming out uh, these days that are sort of classic card games but with a fun modern twist. And Odin is definitely that. Plays two to six players in 15 minutes and is a lighter weight card game. And the way you're doing it is the lead player will be playing a single card on the table and then you have to play 
higher cards than that, but if you play two or more cards, then the cards must either be of the same number or the same color of the lead card. And so it is a card shedding game. You are trying to be the first one to get all the cards out of your hand. Uh, and again, feels like a classic card game, but you know, with some sort of modern gamer twist to it. You know, if you're putting down a uh, a three and a six, you're actually putting down a 63, and now the next player has to play higher than a 63, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, it uh, seems cool and seems like a, a fun, quick card game for sure. Asmodee and Captain Games are releasing Path of Civilization. This is a medium weight euro -y type of game, uh, plays one to five players in 60 to 120 minutes. But one of the positive things I've heard about this game is that it, you know, it feels snappy. It's not a dragged out game, uh, especially for a Euro game, like you can play it fairly quickly. And part of the reason you can play it fairly quickly is there is a lot of simultaneous play in the game. Boy, do I love simultaneous play, you know? I don't want to Wait 10 minutes for you to decide what to do on your turn, Jerry. I'm going to flip the table and leave the room if that takes you that long. And so simultaneous play just really solves that, that problem, right? Hey, we're all making decisions at the same time. We're all doing stuff, you know? Uh, I, I just, yeah, I think more games should have simultaneous play when it makes sense and when they can. Uh, this is a civilization building game, you know, Path of Civilization. You might have guessed it was a Civ game, huh? Did, did the word civilization in the title give it away? Did, is, did that make you think of, civ of a civilization game? I hope so. I hope it did. Uh, and so because of that, you know, with most civilization games, there's a ton of different tracks that you can do. You can do science, you can do military, you can do culture, you can do industrialization, and you're going to be moving up on all of these different tracks and comboing stuff and scoring points in different ways based on how you want to grow your civilization. You know, it doesn't matter which path you take, you just better do it well and you better do it better than the other players at the table because that's how you're going to win. So if you, like, uh, if you like moving up tracks, if you like building a civilization, if you like simultaneous play, then Path of Civilization might be for you. Asmodee and Simon are releasing Dune War for Arrakis. Uh, this is a heavier weight game. Um, you know, not wildly heavy, but definitely a heavier weight game. Plays one to four players in 120 minutes. And as you might guess from this title, it is about the world of Dune. Uh, you know, popular movies these days, popular book series. Uh, a lot of people grew up on Dune and if you like Dune, this is a highly, highly thematic game. So I think you're going to really like this one. Uh, like, for instance, uh, uh, Roy Kennedy of the Dice Tower, uh, he's a big Dune fan. He gave this game a 10 out of a 10, you know, because it really does a good job with the theme. So that's definitely one of the reasons you're going to jump into this game. Uh, if you like war games, if you like asymmetric games, that's another reason you might want to check out Dune War for Arrakis because there are very different they they are very asymmetric play styles, very asymmetric win conditions, very asymmetric things that you're doing on the board. Uh, some you know you will control House Arrakis, other people will control uh, House uh, Harkonnen, uh, and you are doing different things out on the board to try to win the game. And it is a sort of war game feel. You know there are troops on a map, and you're going to be moving troops around. You're going to be building stuff. You're going to be building up your strength in certain areas. All of that sort of stuff. You're fighting for control of the planet and remover and maneuvering troops all over the board. And it is a big board. This is a table hog of a game for sure. But again, if you like Dune stuff, if you like uh, thematic war games, fantasy war games, then Dune War for Arrakis might be for you. Uh, Asmodee and Ludonova are releasing the game Fictions. Memoirs of a Gangster. 
Uh, this is a medium weight game, but on the lighter side of medium weight, plays one to four players in 30 to 90 minutes. And it is a cooperative game. So if you like cooperative games, this is the first one we have from the month of March, a cooperative game here. Um, in the game, you are playing as a mob boss and you are trying to sort of take over a city. Uh, you are, every game is played over three scenarios, but those scenarios can change. So you're always going to do two scenarios and then the third scenario is uh, the same across games of this. But you can pick those first two scenarios and so there's going to be replayability in the game because of that and you know it's sort of thematically connected to those like 1920s and 30s pulp novels you know this is a very gritty feel uh to the game and during the game you're going to be recruiting henchmen those henchmen are going to get you special powers those henchmen will get you more dice and special dice and then you'll be rolling dice to overcome obstacles and again it is a cooperative game with a bunch of different scenarios in it uh and so ultimately you are trying to um win the mayoral election you are trying to be the mob boss that takes over the city by 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 becoming the mayor by taking over the mayor's office you know haha <laughs> we're gonna corrupt this city from the inside but this city's already been corrupted oh that's probably true a lot of places um so that's fiction's memoirs of a gangster that makes it feel so like romantic memoirs of a gangster i'm gonna tell you about the time i whacked old jimmy two shoes behind the 7-eleven in my memoir. Um, all right. Dumb. I make dumb jokes. Barnmaid Games is releasing the game Expressions. Uh, this is a, a party-ish game, but more on the sort of thinky side of party. You know, I, sometimes when I say party games, I feel like people think like big group, silly, wacky games. This plays two to five players in five to 20 minutes, and it is a lighter weight sort of party game, but there's a lot of deduction in the game too, which is why I sort of call it more of a, uh, a thinking uh, party game. Uh, and I've even seen some people um, compare it a little bit like to the crew, the crew, because you are going to be giving clues based on how you play the cards. So in the crew, you have a token and you're putting the token at different on different parts of your card and that's giving your teammates information. Uh, well, you know, this is a cooperative game, I should note as well. And so you are playing a card and then playing it in a certain orientation to give information to your teammates. Is this the lowest of that color you have? Is this the highest of that color do you have? Do you have a bunch of the same number in your hand? Things like that. You're going to be giving information like that. But one of the interesting things of the game is there's essentially a central board and cards that you play to give clues are going to go on the bad side of the board and then you're going to guess what you think other people have in their hand based on the clues that are being given. If you are right, those go to the good side of the board. There is a thematic thing that they call those. It's not just called good and bad. I'm just saying that right now for brevity's sake. But So at the end of the game, if you have more cards on the good side than you have on the bad side, you're going to win the game. And so it's really, it's a really interesting push and pull because every card you play as a clue goes to the bad side, but you need to give clues in order to get cards right for the good side. And so how do you give the least clues possible, but still be super helpful with the clues that you give? I don't know. It feels pretty unique for a card game uh, and, and for a deduction game. And so, you know, it's called uh, expressions because there are suits of cards and they, you know, represent anger, sadness, joy, fear, disgust. But, you know, it is a fairly abstract game. It's, it's not like you're playing inside out or anything like that here. Uh, it's about deduction and working together to figure out which cards are in people's hands. So, yeah, sounds pretty interesting to me. Capstone Games is releasing uh, Anunnaki Dawn of the Gods. 
Uh, this is a heavier weight game, plays one to four players in 60 to 120 minutes. Uh, it is a 4X Euro game, and so you are, with a 4X game, I don't know what all the Xs are, I can't ever remember that, but you know, you're doing things like building up your civilization, and then going out and exploring, and then getting resources, and stuff like that. So Euro game, um, you know, I, I did, uh, there is, uh, the most interesting thing about the game to me in terms of like when I was watching videos about it and learning about the game for this video, there is this action selection system that is really cool. You have a board and there are spots on the board where you can put a meeple and putting a meeple there uh, gets you those actions. If you move along paths that are connecting the di different action spots, you're going to get bonuses. But you can go to anyone. I don't have to move along a path. I can just jump over here and take that action and then jump over here and take that action. But if I can move along paths, I'm going to get benefits and that's going to give me cool stuff and help me win the game. And so how do I plan out my turns by saying, okay, if I take this action, this turn, the next action, next turn I'll take this action and then I'll take this action and utilize those roots when you can use them. It's a, definitely a unique action selection system um, and you know one of the other things you'll have your sort of own home planet where you are moving guys around and getting resources but you can also portal to other people's planets and that might create conflict and that might create um, stuff where you have to uh, fight the other player uh, and and things like that so you know it's cool that there is Definitely, um, while, while, you know, a lot of the game is sort of your own thing, your own solitary thing, uh, there is points of player interaction in the game where you're going over to someone else's planet or going to explore somewhere else and somebody is already there. So if you like a space theme, if you like uh, developing your ancient, ancient alien civilization, this is a chance to do that for sure and a unique action selection system in the game. Crafty Games is releasing the game Buru. Uh, Bur Buru. Um, it is uh, it is a one to four player game. Plays in sixty to seventy five minutes, and it is a medium weight game. Um, the artwork is gorgeous in, in Burrow for sure. Thematically, you are um, a noble of a powerful maritime kingdom uh, in the 14th century Indonesian archipelago. Uh, and it is a worker placement game, but it's a worker placement game that includes blind bidding. So that's the thing that makes it feel different than other worker placement games. You will be putting out um, discs into different regions on the board and you're putting them face down and those discs will have power on the other side, one to five. And so if you have the most power in a region, you get to take the more prime worker placement spots in that region. You know, it's sort of like everybody, everybody won't get shut out of something, but you know, this particular region, if you're the first person to go there, you might get three cards. Whereas if you're the last person to go there, you're only going to get one card, things like that. You're going to get the, the pick of the resources you want. If you're in this region, whereas you're only going to be left with the last card that is giving you resources, if you have the least power there, and then you will be using those cards and those resources and stuff in a it's a light engine building thing because you can tap cards and do some special abilities you don't ever like build up a huge engine because you're not getting a ton of cards by the end but then you are delivering those resources and and giving offering to the gods and scoring points in those ways uh so yeah the things that stand out it's very very gorgeous and that blind bidding aspect of the worker placement makes it feel different and fresh in the, uh, you know, crowded worker placement genre, for sure. Flat River Group and Arcona Games are releasing Pest. Um, this is a, uh, a medium weight game, but on the higher end of medium weight, maybe like a medium plus, plays one to five players in 60 to 150 minutes. And in the game, you are fighting against a cataclysmic plague, uh, and you are trying to rebuild a fallen empire. And you're doing that by, it is a big, big board, and you will be moving 
uh, around the board and um, getting sick patients, trying to heal those patients, trying to heal different people, and then using resources to rebuild buildings and rebuild civilizations all over the board. So, uh, you know, if, if, you, uh, if you didn't get enough of the plague feeling in 2020, then this is a good opportunity uh, to get that plague feeling right here. And you know what? And you can beat the plague. That's the reason you play it, is you get to beat the plague in this game. Hopefully, that, hopefully you're doing that. Uh, and so, you know, uh, as you are moving around, it's played over six rounds, and, and as you're moving around, uh, you're gaining different renown and victory points for the things that you're doing, the people you're healing, the stuff you're rebuilding, and the player with the most renown is uh, the winner at the uh, end of the game and declared the savior of the empire. We have so much to thank. We're thanking you so much. You did it. You ended the plague. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a big board with a lot going on, and you're going to move around and defeat that unknown plague. Grandpa Beck's Games is releasing Another Man's Treasure. Um, Grandpa Beck it, it does a very good job, um, generally speaking, with sort of taking classic card games that you sort of know and play with your family growing up and then giving them twists and making them feel different and making them feel fresh and unique. And that is sort of what a Another Man's Treasure is. It's a little bit like um, Phase 10, the card game, but with some new interesting stuff going on. It's a, it's a, a vintage rummy style game where you are trying to create sets or runs of cards. Um, and one of the things you're doing, though, is, is every round you are sort of having to declare what you're going for, right? And it's like a Yahtzee-style game where once you've crossed that thing off, you can't go for that anymore. And so the options that you have dwindle as the game goes on of what you can do with the hand of cards in front of you. The other thing that feels unique about Another Man's Treasure is when somebody discards a card... If that really works well for your hand, you could say, like, I want it. I want that card. Uh, but then at, if you take that card, you also have to draw an unknown card off the deck. So it can help you. It can hurt you. It can be good for you. It can be bad for you. And so there's, like, a little bit of a of a, a gamble with that sort of mechanism in the game. And it makes it feel a little bit exciting and different where you're like, ooh, I want that one, but do I want the other one? I gotta take it if I want it, you know? And so, um, yeah, they're, they're really good. Grandpa Beck's games, really good sort of family-friendly card games. Uh, Another Man's Treasure plays two to six players and plays in about 30 minutes. Uh, so if you like uh, small box card games, that might be one to check out for you. Uh, Hachette Board Games, in association with Studio H, is releasing Vampire Village. Uh, I love the artwork in this one. There's a bunch of different monsters and stuff like that in the game. Uh, it is a lighter weight game, but um, maybe on the higher end of lighter weight. Plays one to five players in 20 minutes. And one of the ways they've described this game to me is like, this game is super mean. You gotta like mean games uh, to like Vampire Village. But you're not just being mean to other players. You are also being mean to yourself. You have never been more mean to yourself in a game than you're going to be in Vampire Village. It feels a little bit sort of like a um, galaxy trucker almost in the sense that Every game is played over, um, uh, every round is played over two distinct phases. And in the day phase, you are going to be selecting cards and building your village. And you're going to be putting defenses in your village. You're going to be getting different special abilities. You're going to get different combos. What, what, how, how can I arrange these cards to give me the maximum protection from the monsters that are about to come? And then during the night, you receive creature cards, and you have to split those cards between your own village and other people's village. So you're like, ooh, I can defend against this one pretty well. I'm going to keep this one in my own village, whereas they are weak to this type of monster. Boom, there you go. Try to deal with that. 
Uh, and then other people are going to be giving you stuff too. And you are blowing up your village and just sort of seeing what survives. And that's, that's kind of why I compare it a little bit to Galaxy Trucker. Where it's like we're building and then destroying that with something else. And seeing who comes out on top after we, uh, you know, how, how many of your villagers and your buildings survived after all these monsters came and, uh, and uh, ravaged it. All these vampires and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, if you have the most surviving villagers and tamed creatures mastered at the end of the game, you are the winner. So, if you like being games, check out Vampire Village. And, you know, I'm somebody that, like, I don't know if I like mean games when they're, like, two hours long, because I just feel too beat up by the end, but, like, 20 minutes, I'm like, oh, yeah, I could be mean for 20 minutes, you know, and then we'll just be friends after it. But uh, these 20 minutes, I'm going to be a real jerk to you. You know, that, that's fun to me. Um, Hachette War Games, uh, in association with Le Boite de Joux, is releasing Evil Corp. Uh, so speaking of sort of mean stuff, I love the theme of Evil Corp. You are running an evil corporation and you are trying to do the best job of scaring villages with monsters. And so um, part of the reason that I, oh, I don't think I said it's two to four players, plays 45 to 60 minutes, and it is a medium weight game. But one of the things that caught my attention about Evil Corp, this was actually on my most anticipated games of 2024 and part of the reason is the one of the central mechanisms of the game is bag building and I love bag building games I just they're strategic but also have this element of exciting unknown right you are deciding what to put in your bag but at some point you just reach in and hope you get what you what what, what you need you know and I love that aspect I love that tension of bag building games and so in Evil Corp you are um, going to be getting these new monster tiles uh, to add to your bag. And, and obviously those monster tiles are going to be better than the monsters that you have at the beginning of the game. And then you'll be reaching into your bag and deploying monsters into uh, one of a couple of villages. And then it becomes a real sort of head-to-head -head when you're in that village. You are trying to do a better job scaring the villagers than the person uh, sitting across from you and so you know the terror meter sort of goes up and down as different people different players play different monsters into the village and you know different monsters are also going to get you different powers and special abilities and there's different types of monsters in the game that will be good at different types of things so that gives you some element of control over how you're building your bag because oh I want to I want to specialize in this one aspect sort of thing so uh yeah you are sending a monster tile to one of two villages and scaring as many people as you can so yeah i don't know i just i love the theme of that i love it's like it's like monsters inc you know but we don't have a cute mike wazowski here these are just bad monsters so i'm, I'm gonna be checking out evil corp soon for sure japanime games is releasing Core Connection Nabla Conspiracy. Uh, this is a robot anime inspired deck building game for two to four players. Plays in 30 to 60 minutes and it is medium weight. So um, I don't, I haven't mentioned, but I, I do, you know, this, you're watching right now sort of the best new games coming to retail. Uh, I also do a video now uh, on the best new additions of board games hitting retail because there are a lot of games that are getting re-implemented, a lot of new additions from older games that are coming out or games that are sort of in an established line. I considered putting this one in that video because there have been core connection games before but this is a standalone game you don't have to have played any of the previous core connection games from japanime games uh but you know if you have you're probably gonna respond to this even more uh and so in this game you can pick between six different pilots and robots as the game progresses and you are going to be building up your mech adding new cool technology to your mech and then 
fighting, you know, fighting monsters and stuff like that, if you can, uh, uh you know, you are, uh, I, I, I like the other, I, I love the idea of adding different attachments to your mechs and, and giving them different special abilities and stuff like that, and, uh, this is not a cooperative game, even though you are fighting monsters, whoever can fight the most monsters and, and battle stronger enemies, uh, is going to win the game, if you can, uh, if you can get up to a certain, amount of uh energy then then the game ends and uh and you win so yeah if you like uh, deck building if you like sort of mech building games um this this might be for you core connection nabla conspiracy from japanime games josh sala is releasing the uh game change my mind it is a party game for three to eight players plays in 30 to 60 minutes uh as most party games it is a lightweight game uh, and this is a game where you are ranking stuff, but where it's different, we've seen games where you're ranking stuff before. Where it's different is that you can actually argue your point and change the active player's mind. That's why it's called Change My Mind. So there will be a card that comes out and uh, it has a number of things that are connected by category. And So it'll say Pixar movies and then it'll be like Up and Toy Story and, you know, a bunch of different... Pixar movies and you have to rank them. What what do you think is the best Pixar movie? And so an active player is going to be ranking them with tokens face down. Then everyone else is going to um, guess how the active player ranked those things. But before the active player reveals their tokens, everybody has a chance to say, no, 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 okay, up is good, but this is why to Toy Story is even better. I'm going to change your mind right now. This is why you should rank Toy Story number one. Um, you know, it's I think it's number one because, you know, of the heart. And it's just so relatable. Toy Story, I have never cried so hard at little plastic toys. God, man. That toy, that, that toy Story where they're all going into the incinerator together, I sobbed. I'm not, I, I didn't even, like, I didn't have tears. I was, like, ugly crying with that part. That's number one for me, you know? So that's the game. And you can try to change people's mind, and then you're going to get, um, if whoever has the most uh, sort of correct uh, predictions for how the active player ranked the card, then uh, they're going to get the card, and you play to a certain number of cards. And so if you like games where you're arguing, where you're debating, where you're uh, doing stuff like that, change my mind might be for you. I, I do love party games that, like, get conversations going because those are the moments that you remember those those sort of funny arguments that's the stuff that you remember for sure so uh if you like that kind of game check out change my mind last night games is releasing the game panda royale uh this is a lighter weight game two to ten players plays in 20 to 30 minutes it is a dice drafting and dice rolling game Everybody's going to start with one dice. The same for everybody. But as the game goes on, the game is played over 10 rounds, you are going to be drafting new dice. And there are a bunch of different types of dice in the game. And those different colors of dice are going to score in different ways. They're going to get you special abilities in different ways. And so, you know, it's all about how do you combo your dice together? How do you get things that, uh, you know, what strategy are you going to pick? What kind of dice do you want? Because all of the different colors have different strengths and weaknesses. So if you can carefully assemble your team of dice, which are pandas, obviously, that's why it's called Panda Royale, because those dice are pandas. Everybody knows that. Why would you ever not think those dice are pandas? Uh, and so, yeah, it's just a quick game of dice rolling, dice drafting. Uh, and uh, if you like lighter weight, you know, this is one that definitely works for kids. You know, they have it as eight and up. So if you're looking for a family weight dice rolling game, then Panda Royale might be for you. And the dice look really pretty. There's all different colors of dice in there, so that's nice. Lucky Duck Games is uh, finally releasing Divinus to retail. And what, the reason I say finally is because this is actually a game that had a large crowdfunding campaign in 2021. So it has taken a while. But that being said, Lucky Duck does a really good job 
of mixing board games with technology. Probably their most famous game is um, Chronicles of Crime, you know, uses an app, but they also had Destinies, which used an app. Divinus is another game that mixes the board game with the app. And one of the cool things about that uh, is that it really helps with storytelling. It's very, they're, they're immersive games and the storytelling aspects of the games are very memorable and the app allows you to sort of do more with the world building and the storytelling. And so Divinus is actually a uh, legacy tile laying digital hybrid game, uh, like I said, but um, you know, it is a legacy game, so you're going to be moving through scenarios, and there are uh, 12 scenarios, there's a 12 scenario campaign, and as you explore lands and complete quests and interact with gods, all the choices that you're going to make are going to change the board state, and that's one of the fun things about legacy games, is by the end of it, I have a different game than somebody else has at their house, you know, because we made different choices and stuff. So every time you're doing a new campaign scenario, you are going to open a sealed box of quests, components, stickers, gods, gameplay mechanisms, and more. So it's going to add a bunch of st content throughout the game. Uh, and then again, the, the app does a lot of narration and stuff for you. So there's going to be a storytelling aspect to the questing in this game, which I like, you know, I mean, that, that always makes it feel sort of more immersive, for sure. Uh, I don't think I said already, uh, Divinus is a two to four player game, uh, plays in 60 minutes, but that's like, you know, a scenario of it, and it is a medium weight game, so uh, people should be getting their, um, their uh, pledges here uh, this month in March, and then it hits retail right at the end of March, uh, so... If you've been curious, this is your chance to check out more on Divinus. Pandasaurus Games is releasing the lightweight card game Mind Up. This is, plays three to six players in 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, and in Mind Up, you are starting, there's a row of cards out on the table, and then each player is going to pick a card from their hand, and then the cards are always in ascending order. And so, you are trying to, uh, as cards get put out, let's say there are four people playing, four cards are going to get put out, and then those cards are going to get put under the four that were in the row uh, in ascending order, and then you're going to take the card that is above the card where your card got placed. And so there's a lot of thinking of, okay, what else do people want? If I really want that blue card, I need to play a number in the right sequence of everybody else playing cards in order to get that blue card that I want. Uh, so yeah, definitely I like games where you have to constantly think about what other people are doing, what other people want, uh, and there's a lot of simultaneous play in this one. We're all picking and revealing at the same time, so I like games that move snappy like that. Uh, so if you like card games, uh, and then each of the cards that you get are going to be slotted into these different sort of scoring cards that you have. And at the end of the game, it's like, oh, this one, for every card here, you're going to score two points. And for every card here, you're going to score five, po five points and stuff like that. So you're trying to get cards into right slots and stuff like that. So again, uh, it's a it is a uh, a fun lightweight card game uh, that uh, you know abstract game for sure. But if you're a fan of card games, check out Mind Up. Uh, Pegasus Spiele North America is releasing the game Alpaca. Uh, this is plays two to four players uh, in thirty minutes, and it is a lighter weight card game uh, that, you know, family weight game, uh, but it is a competitive deck building game where you are trying to build up your alpaca farm and have the most successful alpaca farm. And all the alpacas in the game are very adorable. They are adorable in real life too, but they also spit. I got spit on by an alpaca one time and it is not fun, okay? That is their like number one line of defense. You're like, oh, you want to be friends? And they're like, no, Pwah! get out of here. I'm an alpaca and it's gross and it's wet. And yeah, so, you know, I don't, I don't know if I think alpacas are as cute as some other people might think they are, but you know, a lot of people think alpacas are very cute. Uh, and so, um, yeah, you are, you, 
Each player is going to uh, begin with an identical deck of alpaca cards and fence materials. And then, you know, as with a lot of classic deck building games, you're going to get certain money. You're going to add new cards uh, to your deck. You're going to be buying from a market of different alpaca cards that are going to get you special abilities. And then you're going to put some of those under your fence. And then those are going to score you points uh, because they are now in your alpaca farm. And then you can purchase sort of end game bonus cards and things like that. So, you know, a lighter weight deck building game with a theme that's not just like space or or that sort of stuff so a, a fun theme of alpacas even if they spit on you portal games is releasing the game printing press uh this is a sequel of sorts to their game gutenberg but you don't have to have played gutenberg or even know anything about gutenberg to uh like printing press printing press is almost like the quicker lighter version of Gutenberg. Uh, plays one to four players in 15 to 60 minutes. Well, that's quite a range there. 15 to 60. We don't know. It's going to be over super quickly or it's going to take a normal amount of time. Uh, and it is a sort of lighter weight medium game, whereas Gutenberg was maybe the higher weight medium game. Uh, there is sort of some of the same concepts in Gutenberg, but again, it's a very standalone game. You are going to have these cards uh, that you are having to fulfill with different letter types and different inks and stuff like that. But the difference here is that you are drafting cards and then sort of puzzling them together and overlaying them over parts of stuff. And you get this frame, this sort of printing press frame, and you get to choose which uh, parts of your card tableau you are covering up. And then those frames are going to score you points in different ways based on different things you have in there. Oh, if you have a red type, uh, if you have a red ink on this left column, that's going to score you some points. And so you are, it's a real puzzly game where you are laying stuff down, overlapping, and then putting this frame. And one of the interesting things is that frame can move uh, on subsequent turns. You can pick it up and, and choose to put something else in the frame to move it around your sort of tableau of cards uh, based on what's important to you that round. So I like that puzzly aspect of it for sure. You know, can you fulfill customers' orders and bring renown to your printing shop? I never thought printing was going to be this fun in a board game, but I, I really liked Gutenberg a lot. It was in my top 10 of the year, the year it came out. And so I'm, I'm excited to play this one. You know, this one feels like maybe... Uh, an easier teaching game, right? If you're playing with newer players or that sort of stuff, this one's a little bit easier to get into, plays a little bit more quickly. So that's fun. Resonim is releasing the game Avant Card. Uh, this is a one to five player game, plays in about 30 minutes, and it is a, a lighter medium weight card game. It is an abstract game, and that's actually the theme of it. It is about building the best deck of cubist art, you know, art, abstract artwork here. But uh, it is a, I, I've, I've had a chance to play this one, and it feels like a pretty unique deck building game in a cool way. Uh, you are trying to play sort of runs of cards and based on how many cards are in your run you're going to get that much money to buy new cards to then add to your deck and so when i say a run it's like you have to play off of the color or the number so hey i have a purple 11 and then i'm playing a purple 2 and then i have a blue 2 and now i have a blue 7 and so boom i just created a 4 a uh, card run that gets me four money to buy different stuff and all of the cards that you buy while they're only just a sort of color and number that's it there's no a special ability with them each uh, the games comes with um, different sets of special abilities for cards and you can switch those out which makes the game sort of replayable so like oh in this game if you have the most twos you're gonna have more money to spend uh, it, threes allow you to uh, take a different type of card uh, fours allow you to add another you know I don't know what all of the special abilities are but each card number gets you a new special ability and so that's an interesting choice of like, what do you want to add to your deck? 
Oh, do I want to have a bunch of those so I can do this one specific thing? Or do I like that more? Do I want more cards in my deck because I've got six to spend? Do I want two threes or do I want one six? You can sort of do all that sort of stuff. Uh, and uh, again, there's some replayability to it because you can switch out sort of the card powers, uh, what each number gets you. Uh, and it's just a, it's an interesting abstract deck building game. It also has some really cool production value. Like you just sort of roll it out and then boom, 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 boom. You can see what all the different card numbers do. Uh, so that feels very fun as well. Uh, so I'm excited to play Avant Card more here from Resonem. Renegade Game Studios is releasing The Veil of Eternity. Um, this is a great game. I put it on my uh, top most anticipated games of the year here as well. Plays two to four players in 30 to 45 minutes, and it is a sort of lighter medium weight game. But this game is all about card combos. It's all about getting different cards that have special abilities that combo with your other special abilities, and that's like the really fun aspect of the game because you can create these really cool engines where you're like oh man this is such a dope combo and I'm just gonna boom 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 I'm gonna hit this all of the time one of the other things that's interesting and unique about the game is that when you uh, sort of uh, don't take a card, when you trash a card, you're going to get these tokens, and those tokens will help you buy cards in the future, but you are limited to the number of tokens you have, and there is no change given. And so you're like, oh man, if I take four of these ones, I'm stuck with just those four ones, whereas maybe I'm gonna try to get this six over here, or that sort of stuff. Uh, and so that restriction just, makes it feel interesting and, and adds some tough decisions into the game even though you know it's an easy thing to wrap your head around uh, i like games like that that have tough decisions that aren't hard to understand decisions uh and so but yeah again you know it's a fairly abstract game the veil of eternity but if you like card comboing if you like special abilities on cards the veil of eternity is really cool in that respect Skybound Tabletop is releasing the game Sheep in Disguise. Uh, this plays two to six players. It is a lightweight game, plays in 20 to 45 minutes. It is a very take that game. So if you like take that games, then check out Sheep in Disguise. If you don't really like mean games where you're coming after each other a lot, then this one might not be for you. But, you know, it is very fun artwork. There's a lot of silly, wacky sheep in it. Uh, and you are collecting um, sets of sheep and those when you have a set you put it down as a flock and then you are trying to get a certain number of flocks to win the game whoever can get a certain number of flocks of sheep first will win the game uh, but uh, you know again there's a lot of opportunities to steal cards to destroy people's flocks to come after them to do stuff to mess them up you'll all be doing it to each other so you know it's not personal uh, but it definitely is a, uh, a very take that game for sure. You can be street strategic and devious, it says. Uh, and, you know, attack people to help yourself get ahead. Stonemeyer Games is releasing the game Wormspan to retail. I probably don't need to say that much about this game because it's got a ton of hype. And a lot of people already have their copies because they did pre-orders and they did, uh, you know, all if you were a Stonemeyer champion, that sort of stuff, you might already have your copy. Uh, but if you don't have a copy of Wormspan yet, it will be in friendly local game stores this month of March. Plays one to five players in about 90 minutes and it is a medium weight game. It is a spiritual successor to their hit hit game Wingspan that has sold over like two million copies at this point. Uh, you don't have to have played Wingspan to uh, like Wormspan, but it definitely uses some of the same mechanisms. You will have these sort of different card rows and cards will combo well together. There are even some little dragon eggs uh, because that's the difference here. We're not playing with like birds from the world of Earth. We are playing with dragons and stuff like that. Uh, and there are enough differences that this is not compatible with Wingspan. This is not like an expansion. This is not just a different theme. This is a different game, but it includes a lot of the same mechanisms of Wingspan. So if you've ever played Wingspan or if you like uh, dragon games, that sort of stuff, 
uh, check out Wormspan. Trick or Treat Studios is releasing the game Chucky. Uh, this is obviously based off of the Chucky IP, the killer doll that's going around and murdering people. Uh, and uh, it, Chucky plays two to four players in about 60 minutes, and it is a medium weight game. Each player in the game is going to be gathering evidence about the mysterious murders that have been going on. You're trying to figure out what's going on, and th that evidence is going to give you skills and abilities to roll the dice, and so if Chucky comes after you, you're going to need those skills and abilities to get away from Chucky and to survive the round, and so whoever can survive the longest and can overcome those challenges is going to win the game. Uh, Chucky's going to murder some of you. Some of you are getting murdered, and so you know, if you like a horror game, if you're like, man, I wish October was here sooner, then play Chucky right now. You can feel like October. You can feel like Halloween season right now by playing Chucky for sure. And I, I think Trick or Treat has been doing a good job with their IP games. You know, I, I played their Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. I really liked that one. Their Halloween game was good too. I think they are doing a good job with these different sort of horror movie IPs. So, you know, I, I wouldn't be too worried about that if you if you are. So that's Chucky from Trick or Treat Studios. So that was it. That was 25 games that are hitting retail here in March. So I hope you found something that you're excited about. Uh, as you might be able to tell, these this video takes uh, a lot of work and I do a ton of research. It takes me going around to a lot of different board game conventions, building relationships with publishers, talking to those publishers, all that sort of stuff. So if you want to support that work in this series, uh, you're welcome to check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Grants Game Rex. And uh, I hope you're playing a lot of great games out there. I hope you're uh, enjoying what you're getting to the table right now. Thanks so much for being here. Please like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. I, don't, I always feel weird saying it, but it does genuinely help. And I'm very close to 10,000 subscribers right now. So that's like a cool mil milestone. I hope that I hit that soon, you know? So thanks so much, everybody. I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex.